Hey guys, welcome back to Project Tube. This is part three of casting gear down for what? Planetary Gearbox. We got three more pieces to cast here, not including the base, which we'll see about later. And originally I wanted to cast these two uh, ring gears today, but I don't like how this print came out, so I'm getting rid of it and printing it out again. It's on the printer right now. So we'll end up casting these two items, which is the output carrier and the output ring gear. So let's get started. First things first, just like in part one and two, we need to coat all the models in a soupy solution of plaster. That way all the gear teeth and intricate parts of the models come out and we don't get any bubbles or anything in the, the teeth of the gears. A couple things to note about these two parts of the gearbox as they're both fairly intricate. Obviously the output ring gear more so than the output carrier. The output ring gear is geared on the inside, but the outside of the ring ha is keyed to fit into the output carrier and the inside of the output carrier is key to accept it. So those two areas needed to be painted uh, with the plaster so that they came out correctly. In addition to that, the output carrier also has a hexagonal hole that allows you to mesh it up to a second gearbox further lowering the, the gear ratio. So both those areas had to be painted really well so there was no bubbles and they would meet up you know, fairly well after the cast. The next step of the process was to get the sprues taken care of and because I wanted to save time and cast these together I built kind of like a T-shaped sprue channel. The difficult part was the output ring gear. Because of the outside being keyed I had to cut a smaller piece of styrofoam that would fit in between each of the keys. That way when I cut off the sprue later after casting I wouldn't mess up any of the keys. I've said it before in previous videos, but it's something I always make sure to note because it's something that took me a long time to realize, and that's the main sprue channel and how tall it is, especially on casts like this where you have a lot of intricate little details and a lot of little places that need to be filled. You have to have that large sprue channel to create enough pressure down at the mold to force that metal into the little nooks and crannies of the mold. So it's something to take note, especially if you plan on doing any cast. After I got everything glued together, I went back with the plaster and painted it over the areas where I glued the styrofoam to. And there was two reasons for this. One, to prevent any bubbles around those areas because some of them had, you know, key cha channels and so on and so forth. And the other reason is this whole assembly was fairly flexible and kind of flimsy. And the last thing I wanted was I stick it into the main plaster mold and a piece breaks off and I'd have to start all over. So I painted on the plaster around the whole kind of bottom portion of this mold to give it more structural stability so that it wouldn't all break apart and it seemed to work pretty good. After the plaster of Paris that I painted on was fairly dry, it was time to prepare the main mold. So I mixed up a 50-50 mix of plaster of Paris and sand, poured it in the box, and took the whole sprue assembly, pushing it into the mold and holding it in there until the plaster had set. Here's a shot of the mold after it's dried and I remove the box. This mold isn't super big so I'm going to go ahead and throw it on the forge for the burnout process. If you want to know more about that, look at my last video or my other casting videos because I'm not really going to go into the burnout process in this video. Alright, the mold is out of the forge, out of the burnout process. Basically, stun smoking. What are we looking at? Six, seven, eight. 870 degrees down there it was, that's where it was sitting up here it's uh, 700 degrees just got out of the forge so let's melt some metal and make our pour okay finally to the pour as you can see we got some flames there that means the burnout process wasn't complete it's not a volcano so not super bad but not good either So here's a little post pour commentary. I had, I was worried I wasn't gonna have enough metal, honestly, enough aluminum to, to fill this thing. And it looks like I, I came real close. Uh, it did reach the top there, but just barely. And the other thing I noticed that I don't think you could see from the other shot 
was there some bubbling at the top main sprue here, which means there was still some wax in there. Not a lot, because I didn't get a volcano, but there was still some kind of combustible in there, whether it be styrofoam or the uh, machinable wax, wax filament um, that was in there that hadn't melted out completely. And I did notice right before the pour, there was some smoking coming out, very little, uh, but at that point in time, it was, you know, I had to make the pour. So uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna go ahead and let it cool, and then uh, we'll crack it open. All right, it's the next morning, and the thing is totally cool now, so let's see what the results are. All right, guys, let's take a look at it. I cleaned it up, wire brushed it off, got all the plaster off it. Uh, so let's take a look at it before I cut off all the sprues and see what we were left with. So we got two little bubbles right here on the inside, little poop nuggets right there. No big deal, I can grind those out. Uh, that's not a really an issue. There was also two little ones on the outside here. That's not even an issue. I can grind them off, but it wouldn't affect anything anyways. The ring gear came out pretty good. There's only one place that I would say might be an issue and it's right up here. Um, let's see if I can focus on that. The gear, the teeth did not form totally. I, I don't honestly know what happened right there. Um, I can guess at it, but maybe a bubble or something. But other than that, everything came out really good. So let's get these cut off, all the sprues cut off, and we'll get some more close-ups of them. All right, guys, well, we are making some progress here. I'm pretty happy with these, how these turned out. Uh, they're all ground down and pretty much ready to go. I do have some, just like the other gears, some little bubbles inside the gear teeth that I'm just gonna have to grind out. But for the most part, they came out really well. This does fit in here as it's supposed to. I don't wanna push it in there because it'll be a pain but to get out, but it does fit in there. Um, and of course, this fits in here. Not that that goes there, but another one would if you hooked up a second gearbox. So all together, we're making a lot of good progress here. Next week, we will be casting this guy, which is the main input ring gear. And uh, we'll, that'll pretty much complete it other than the base, which I'll probably print out in PLA just to test it. And if I find that it's not sturdy enough, I will go ahead and cast that as well. But we'll see how that goes. If you like this video, make sure you hit like and subscribe so you get notified of my next video next week, see how all this comes out. We're probably looking at another video, maybe two, till this gets complete. And then I'll ship it all over the gear down for what? For him to test it and hopefully break it. See how much it'll lift. So uh, I will see you guys next time.